Flounders. Another day, another Monster demo. What's popular, YouTube? Yeah, Come on, man. Today, we are going to talk about the most talked about player this year. Could he be? We need the top 20 most talked about players in the year. I think he might be number one. The player that we're about to talk about is somebody who has had a massive presence in the scene. Okay. He's a guy who might be one of the best A1S players in pro cs at the moment he's somebody who everybody wants to say is incredibly overrated or incredibly underappreciated he's somebody who didn't get to play a lot of big events this year but when he did was not the reason his team lost <laughs> this is impossible not to give away uh who i'm talking about here um this guy, if there's anything else that I can that I can talk about, I really want you guys to listen to this intro because I've got a lot of things to unpack before we get into the game. And this one is so narrative focused. There's so many sides to this conversation. It's it's very interesting. I feel bad for the guy at hand actually because, and I'll I'll explain in a second. And also before I get into it, this is a list that it complements HLTV's list. It doesn't try to mirror it or predict it in any sense. This is just my list. And uh, that's what makes this placing and this player and some of these conversations interesting. It's just my view on where these guys stand in this year with a mixture of stats, but also most importantly, people who I feel like are best in role to find their place on the team. And when we watch them play, we know why it's them and not somebody else. I think those are the three biggest things for me. Um, yeah, after watching so many demos this year, casting so many games, being in person for the big moments and stuff like that, I wanted to throw my hat into the ring and uh, make some calls. So, okay, who is it? It's Blame F. It's Blame F, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason that this guy is sucking up all the air in the room, he's got great big lungs. Just mass. He's huge, you know? Uh, listen, um, I've been on a plane with Blame F on it, and I think he was definitely the biggest guy on the whole plane. He's bigger in person than he is on camera. He truly is. In Matt, he's, he's huge. <laughs> How is this relevant to anything? Well... I think this is part of the reason that he's, he's talked about so much. He's a popular player before he was good. You know, play, Colin for Complexity made a name for himself as a really strong IGL who worked really hard. And that seems to continue to be true today. And this year and the last year, his stats have been pretty phenomenal. But in both years, like last year, I didn't even have it on my top 20 list. Okay. I was a blame meth doubter in some sense on my last year. Well, I think I said that Blame F, he didn't have a functional team last year, so that was huge demerit points for me when I was looking at everybody else when it came to deep runs and any kind of consistency. I was like, something's missing here. What, what's going on? Like, why is why is this not working? Okay. And this year is one year where I became a Blame F believer. As an individual, I, I never thought he was overly selfish or making bad plays. But this year, I feel like we have more proof that he definitely has been very good and a team is still losing around him despite how he's blaming. I would say, and this is what I want people to listen to the most, I would say blaming Blame F for Astralis losing in 2022 is the same thing as blaming Rops for Mouse Sports losing when he played on the team and was the best player on the team, okay? When Rops was on Mouse Sports, he was the best player on the team and one of the best players in the world. But the only thing that people could talk about is how slow he played, how few clutches he attempted, how he put self-preservation over everything else, how his stats were good, but they weren't winning games. All of this disparaging Rops, despite the fact that he had a really weak team. And now we see Rops on a really good team fit in almost the same player, has definitely gotten better, but is totally functional as himself, just has a better team. And how this relates to Blame F is that everybody wanted to believe that Rops was this superstar player because of his FPL climb, because of his stats, because of him being the best player on Mouse Sports at the time. What I called him consistently and was going to say I'm right about is a role player superstar. Somebody who cannot be a true superstar with the way that he plays CS, but can be the best in his role and can absolutely elevate a team who is ready to win, okay? They cannot be relied upon to carry the whole server through a tournament, uh, through every map, through every tournament, and will have inflated stats along the way. But just because you have inflated stats does not mean that you're doing a bad job on other rounds, okay? Fur has this famous quote about eco kills, and that was, 
if you, you know, it, as a joke, he almost said, if I don't get the eco kills, we're going to lose. And it's true that BlameF does get a lot of eco kills, who had his tweet showing the discrepancy between his rating. But he also gets the rifle kills. And I know that because I watched the games. I watched the demos. And I watched BlameF earlier this year to check in. I watched, I analyzed a nuke demo that showed it perfectly. His lurk timings are excellent. I mean, amazing. You've seen the two and three Ks on rifle rounds. I know you're confused about how to feel about BlameF because you've watched the games and seen him have massive performances versus great players and outduel a lot of riflers without being really selfish. Now, that doesn't mean that he's completely perfect. And also, like Rops, again, this is what defines him as role players. They maybe do play a little selfishly at times. They maybe do put... The, the, maybe the rotations can be a little bit slow. But everyone is entitled to be bad or rough around the edges in some regards. You still see the great rounds come through. You still see the maps that would easily be won if, if he had enough competent players on his team ready to play that day. Blame F is not the guy that you can blame for Astralis losing. He has done extremely well. There are still some questions about how much his style could improve, but there's way too much attention and spotlight on a player who is putting up his end of the bargain. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I I rate Blame F very highly this year. I don't have him, like, you know, as a top five player in this year. I don't know where HLTV will put him. He's a huge impact rating. I don't really read off that, to be honest. Um, I think it works sometimes. It doesn't work other times, which means it doesn't work, in my opinion, even though the uh, formula is right there. Um, best A1S player this year, uh, insane CT sides. He's got device now, so we'll get to see what Astralis can do. But like we had like a game where Astralis and Bl or where device and Blame F had an unbelievable rating, and they still got two out. It was like by Heat or something like that. I on my stream, I watched all four device maps just to see the demos. Uh, didn't upload those, but probably should have. I had a lot to say here, so I just want to get that out. Um, we're going to watch a Blame F demo. CT side, Ancient, playing inside of Cave. And we're going to watch a player do all the right things, I think. I haven't watched this game, but I watched some stuff in preparation. The spam timings will be down. The A1S kills will be there. And he's here to farm the ninjas in pajamas on the CT side after having a decent T side and allowing them back into the game. So let's talk about Blame F. I think, and also, by the way, another reason why he's simply not higher on the list for me is just because of, like, there was just a lack of presence, you know, ver like the ma vast majority of his maps were versus, like, uh, tier two and tier three teams just because Astralis didn't, didn't make the runs, didn't qualify for the things, didn't qualify for the fall finals, didn't get the major, you know what I mean? Like, unfortunately, like, the, you know, it's like the Dexter thing where it's like, I feel like I'm sure they would have, like, Blame F, Dexter would have done better versus better teams have been higher. I'm not doubt, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm sure of that. I'm like half sure of it. Also, really good with dualies. Really good with dualies. A CT side ancient. I don't know how many kills he was going to get there, but very good with them. Uh, but didn't get a chance to prove it. That's pretty much the story. Do, 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 do. I'm loving it. All right. A1S out to the cave play elbow smoke allows you to swing into this position give yourself a good angle versus dp all of the map control over here allows you to win ct rounds right elbow control allows you to peek down b it's this chain reaction elbow control allows you to peek down b uh mid control means fast rotations early information means you can overstack a all of these things help you kind of checkmate the round so it all starts with the banana controller outside this control and you can do that on the other side of the map so you can try to push but it's kind of uh less less common and uh, m more m yeah better more more often played via cave kind of the better place to push and try to get control of that we'll see a lot of teams use and sometimes the adjustment for the t side just wait it out wait out the door smoke attack b late or in this case looks like they might be going a seems like there's not much to see here He's throwing a Molotov and the nades, same way that we saw in the Kinder game, just on the path to stop the cross. He's going to look for spam timings with his uh, M4. He's trying spamming a wood wall that goes open, opens up into mid here and tries to get as much damage as possible. Rain's the best at this, I would say, when it comes to playing Cave, at least this year. His Antwerp games, where he was playing Ancient, were unreal with the amount of uh, spam damage he got off, nade timings he got off. He was very good at that. 
Uh, this boost has worked very well for Blame F. It's great because on that boost, you can actually see onto the onto Banana as well. Oh. <clears throat> see, he doesn't even get eco kills. There are these nades again. I really want to talk more about this. Uh, sometimes he actually... It, 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 he did it versus OG in one of these games that I watched where he... As soon as that cave smoke came down, he swung through it with a push. Because sometimes people respect that their their smokes are going to work. And then he, he found timings to get through. It doesn't always work, but... Also, no spawn to do that. So back to a passive spot. But uh, Blamef doesn't really give up. Um, in these positions, he'll still either stay pretty close to cave or watch something and eventually, of course, they're, they're trying to figure out if it's going to be an A play and then he'll be a rotate out. Did see analyzed a lot of uh, Farley's demos this year to figure out if he was being blamed reasonably, like for good reason. And I think uh, I actually felt like I came into the game expecting Farley, expecting that, yes, Farley is just not good enough to play on Astralis and wasn't good enough. When I watched the games, I watched like six demos of Farley. I actually saw that they, they kind of hung him out to dry sometimes. And they were too slow about executing when he was far out there with an op. Trying to be the aggressive fun plus Phoenix Farley that we know. Um, and it felt like he was trying to play the same way in a lot of their games. And they were either supporting him in his good games. Or letting him just getting way too far out there and not supporting him at all. So... There are problems with Astralis. I mean, obviously, uh, Glaive's not the same player that tore up 2018, right? Uh, um, you know, you guys know how I feel about people who have won it all, and I, I do give them an excuse in the past. Some people don't, and they favor longevity, and I fa I do favor longevity as well, or at least a certain period of dominance, a certain amount of things won, right, before you can give up. But it just happens too often that people um, fall off after winning. That's just... Like every, in everything, the, the the thirst gets quenched. Glaive's got a kid now. As much as he, you know, can do it, I'm sure. I I mean, I'm maybe it's conjecture. I'm sure there are moments where Glaive will be a genius, and I'm sure that there are time and days and weeks where it feels like he's just not the same uh, caller that he used to be. And Blame F has picked up some of the calling as well. I believe he's still. I don't know if he's still calling on Mirage or he did for a bit or what's going on there. But he's so it was of course a, a caller for a long time, so that's a natural fit for him. Some players actually play better than they call. Not always. Saw the electronic story, of course. With the blast Lisbon win. Here's that boost again. This is very good, especially if an op comes into this angle. That is huge. And again, this peak right here. Two great spots. The only sucky part is the molly that comes down sometimes, but apart from that, especially early into the round when there's not going to be a full exec, nice position to be. Go for the double push. There it is. Good display of activity. And yes, we saw Brelin kind of crouch up into this angle. Zipix being very selfless. Rifler going first. But with them cracking open mid, it looks like they're going to turn it towards the A site. And does Zipix die for the cause? Well, Blame F has actually now got to wonder if Rez is going to come back to him. But it looks like the bomb's on the other side of the map. So he's out of there. Blamef made a, a wrong decision there, but he didn't know for sure. Rez was spotted uh, in CT, and someone was in mid. And if he fought that way, of course, he could have won, but he didn't know where the bomb was. So it's not wrong. It's just unlucky. Unlucky or bad? Unlucky. Actually, a lot less spams this game. I think it's you can see the way he's playing. He's worried about them pop flashing through the smoke and like Hampus running him down with a Mac 10 because you know he's just foaming at the mouth to try to do that. And again, sort of just quietly establishing, punishing the pocket. These these nades are just so key. This stuff is super like most of the time they're missing. You know, you're missing like 80% of the bullets you spray through spray through these. But sometimes you just light someone up and you do so much damage too. Oh, that was a beautiful first kill and some good damage on Plopski as well. 
you literally cannot play this position if you are not willing to spam. So that's that is something we just that's part of learning the spot. Most of your duels you're not seeing anything. Especially in the early portion of the round, but because the walls are so bangable, you have to use ammo on these. And ultimately you have to get damage doing it, so. And for somebody who watches as many demos as Blame F is purported to have, it makes perfect sense that he's in a spot like this, right? Especially for catching timings. Okay, this is good stuff. You know, all very calm kills. That smoke isn't that deep, so Reds could come back and spam it, but... Yeah, yeah a little, little scary for a second, but... Still, no points of reference for him. They're actually not attacking him that much in this one. He's doing a good job of working with the space that he's got for himself. That molly right there just allows him to pull that spam off, but he eats a lot of damage in response. Okay. What does low health blame do? Oh, he just swings for the fences and Plopsky goes down with info on the bomb. See, his aim is very good. It's so calm. It's it's really good. And yeah, he's just he he's killing a high percentage of riflers. I mean, I'll put it that way. He is killing a high percentage of riflers. When you watch the games, again, I, I'm sure everyone's so confused. They've seen him have all these great rounds, but they also at the same time feel like, you know, things are a little inflated. They just can't get it. Why would you, why would you lose if you have someone getting this many frags? And I think these are fair questions. Um, so interested to see what happens 2023. Device on the team alongside Blame F. I don't know if, who this is going to be a last dance for. Glaive, Zipix... Or what, you know, what the deal is going to be if something happens. But the vice looks fresh so far this year. It looks like he's in it. Blame's still in it. He's still looking for career accomplishments. He's looking for a major. He's looking for S tier tournament wins, you know. There's a lot in it still for Blame to roll out of bed for. Hey, and this one's pretty calm. Hey. Okay, well, not the most rich demo. Good one. He's still... I mean, did you see that many eco uh, kills in that game? I didn't, so... That was good. I, I think I don't want to... I don't like to pre-watch the demos for the, the demo I'm going to watch live. I watch demos before it and then come into it with some context for the position. Uh, that comes down to a pretty simply played um, cave position where they pretty much won all around. So e easy as you like, as Sponge would say. Uh, that I talked about the chain reaction with mid control and and outside B and everything like that. They just really get, did, didn't get pushed to the limit in that game, so we didn't get to see you know what happens. The more that happens in that spot, I think a Kinder's demo that I did on Ancient uh, Last is the best thing to go back and watch if you want to learn how to play Cave and watch a really good demo on that. But here's a good display of some ideas, some concepts. Blame winning most of his duels versus riflers. And importantly, most importantly, a lot of context on the individual person, the enigma that is Blame this year. So hope you enjoyed watching that. Blame F is my number 14 player of the year. And I am so excited to see where he will be on the HLTV list. Who's going to be number 13? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks, as always, for watching.